So, uh, you may recall that um, when we discussed uh, moist air or rather uh, defined the specific enthalpy of uh, moist air, we actually defined, um, uh, defined something like this. So, this is the enthalpy of the moist air mixture. And if you actually want a specific enthalpy of moist air, then we divide uh, both sides by the mass of the moist air and we are then led to something like this Ma over M times HA plus Mv over M times Hv. Okay. So, this would be the uh, uh, specific uh, enthalpy of uh, moist air, it would be in uh, units of say kilojoule per uh, kg air. Okay. And we can then approximate uh, HA uh, using uh, the uh, calorically perfect assumption and HV may be approximated as HG of T. However, um, if you look at uh, psychrometric applications, then uh, uh, you can or uh, the uh, examples that we have done so far, you probably will uh, notice that um, we get this combination of uh, terms uh, Cp times T2 plus uh, omega times T2 and Cp times T1 plus omega times uh, T1. So, you notice uh, combinations like this. So, let me just show this with a uh, different color. So, this is the uh, second uh, combination. So, if you look at the, um, uh, the next example that we saw, here too you see the same thing. So, you see um, uh, Cp uh, times T2 plus omega times H2 and you notice this combination uh, Cp times T1 plus omega times uh, H time H of T1. So, you notice this combination. So, um, what you are seeing is actually the specific enthalpy uh, defined on a per dry air basis or per kg of dry air basis. Here also you see the same thing. This term, uh, these two terms go together and then you again see that these terms go together. Okay. So, which means that we um, uh, would like to um, uh, define the, um, the specific enthalpy of moist air not on a kg of moist air basis. So, basically uh, what I just wrote was something like this. So, H over M is M A dry air over mass times H A plus M V over M times H V. Okay. This of course becomes Cp times T, this is Hg of T okay. and this is nothing but the specific enthalpy of moist air in units of say kilojoule per kg air in the usual manner. But in the applications or examples that we have seen so far, we notice that it does not uh, uh, when, you, when you look at the, uh, uh, the energy equation that we have applied to different examples, we notice that uh, the terms do not appear in this combination, but appear in a combination where uh, the specific enthalpy is defined on a per uh, unit mass of dry air. So, basically instead of dividing by m, we divide by mass of dry air. So, if you do that, then we end up with this combination H A plus omega times H V, which is in units of kilojoule per kg dry air. Okay. There is nothing wrong with this. Okay. So, this is perfectly all right, okay. but this is specific enthalpy on a per unit mass of moist air. But in applications, when we apply energy balance uh, to uh, practical problems and examples that we have seen, this combination does not appear. Okay. We always see that this combination is uh, what is seen and this is specific enthalpy which we have denoted H star specific enthalpy on a per kg dry air basis. Okay. This is far more useful in psychrometric applications than this, okay. but there is nothing wrong with this also. And H star is uh, what we will use uh, in, um, in our uh, examples from now onwards. Okay. But we will clearly indicate, so this is actually H of moist air on specific enthalpy of moist air on a per kg on a per kg uh, moist air basis or per kg air. This is H star which is specific enthalpy of moist air on a per kg dry air basis. 
Now, the um, uh, new terms <coughs> that we have introduced in psychrometry uh, are like this. So, this is a list of new terms that we have introduced. First one is the, uh, the partial pressure of water vapor which may be written like this omega over 0 0.622 plus omega uh, times p, where p is the uh, mixture pressure as always. And uh, the mixture pressure during uh, <coughs> psychrometric operations, unit operations remains constant. Generally, we assume the mixture pressure to be constant. Furthermore, in all the examples that we are working out, we have assumed the mixer pressure to be 1 atmosphere, but mixer pressure is usually a constant, which means that PV depends only on omega. Okay. Now, relative humidity phi is nothing but PV over P sat of T. So, PV here depends on omega, P sat depends on T obviously. So, phi depends on both omega and T. Okay. So, we may write omega depends on temperature T and omega. By temperature, what we mean here is the dry bulb temperature. Now, H star may be written as H A plus omega H V and H A itself may be written as C P times T plus omega uh, H G of T. Okay. Now, H G of T obviously is dependent on T. The first term here is linearly dependent on T. H g itself is dependent on T in, um, in some manner. Okay? We have not done a curve fit or anything like that, but we know that it is dependent on T and H star is dependent on omega as you can see in a linear fashion. Okay? So, in principle, this expression depends on T and omega. Now, the specific volume of dry air is nothing but the volume of the mixture divided by mass of dry air. Now, volume of mixture itself may be written like this. So, we may write uh, so we may write for the water vapor, uh, partial pressure of water vapor times volume of mixture equal to mv or v times t. So, v itself may be written in terms of the um, uh, mass of vapor and partial pressure of water vapor like this. And if you do that, it then simplifies to <coughs> omega times rv uh, times t over pv. And if I replace pv in favor of omega using this relationship, I get finally something like this. And as you can see, va depends on t and omega clearly. Now, this relationship, the next relationship comes from this one here. So, if you look at this one, again, I can uh, gather C p times T 2 plus this as H star of 2 and C p times T 1 plus this as H star of T 1 <coughs> and then rewrite this. So, if I do that, I end up with this and remember, uh, we have already said that uh, T2 is T wet bulb, T1 is temperature or T dry bulb. So, if you do that, we end up with uh, this relationship. And again, prima facie, this seems to depend on T and omega. And the dew point uh, is nothing but T sat of P V and P V depends on omega. So, this depends on omega only. But the, uh, the important point that emerges from uh, looking at the list of expressions here is that all the quantities depend only on two independent properties T and omega, which is the basis for uh, developing the psychrometric chart. So, basically the psychrometric chart has two axes, vertical axis is omega as you can see here and the horizontal axis is T which is the dry bulb temperature of course. Okay. So, the basis for that comes from this observation. 
ok. Some of them uh, interestingly enough depend only on omega. Let me denote this using a slightly uh, different color. So, this depends only on omega and this also depends only on omega. All the others seem to depend on t and omega. So, basically the psychrometric chart as you can see has um, uh, omega as the y axis as you can see from here and dry bulb temperature on the x axis and uh, lines of constant uh, values of each one of these variable is given uh, in the is depicted in the chart. So, basically uh, uh, the uh, chart plots lines of constant p v, lines of constant phi, lines of constant h star, lines of constant v a, wet bulb temperature, lines of constant wet bulb temperature and dew point temperature. Now, if you look at this and this because these depend only on omega, uh, that means if uh, the, um, uh, the axis is vertical, this can be shown very nicely in the axis itself. So, let me just erase this. So, what is shown here, let me erase this also just uh, ok. So, what is shown here, this is P v, but instead of showing it in kilo Pascal, this is shown in millimeters of mercury and the reference value 760 millimeters of mercury for barometric pressure is given there. So, this can be easily converted into kilo units of kilo Pascal. So, P v depends only on omega, since omega is the vertical axis, P v axis is also vertical. Dew point temperature as you can see here. So, this is T d p since that also depends only on omega that can also be shown uh, in, a, in a vertical axis parallel to omega axis ok. So, this is the dew point. Uh, so, this is dew point 0, dew point uh, 10 degree Celsius, 20 degree Celsius and so on ok. So, that is shown uh, parallel to the omega axis. So, these two are straightforward. And uh, so, we had denoted them using this green color. So, let me just show them again. So, this is in green, this is in green, they are dependent only on omega. So, we do, we can show them in a vertical axis. Now, notice that the uh, omega values here are given in grams of moisture per kg of dry air, ok, not kg uh, of uh, vapor per kg of dry air, but rather grams of uh, vapor per kg of dry air. So, the numbers are nicer uh, that way uh, in the in the chart. Now, let us look at these uh, relations and then uh, sort of try to get an idea of what these lines will look like on a, uh, on a T omega chart ok. Remember omega is vertical and the dry bulb temperature T is horizontal. Let us start with H star ok. Now, H star as you can see the quantity whose dependence on temperature we do not really know is this H g ok. So, let us see H g. Now, if you actually um, go to the uh, property tables, let us say steam tables and for the range of temperatures that we are uh, going to likely to encounter in psychrometric applications, we already mentioned that. So, for the range of temperature uh, uh, that we are likely to encounter in psychrometric application, Hg varies very little only by about 100 uh, kilojoules uh, per kilogram or so out of a total of uh, 1500 kilojoule per kilogram. I am sorry, two out of 2500 kilojoule per kg, it varies only by about 100 uh, kilojoule per kg, which is less than a 5 percent variation. So, what happens is across the entire range of temperatures that we are seeing, Hg varies by less than 5 percent, which means that essentially Hg is a constant, more or less which means that all H star equal to constant lines uh, will depend linearly on T and omega, which means the H star equal to constant line is a line with a negative slope, meaning in the second uh, quadrant, straight line in the second quadrant, ok. So, if we say that this is more or less constant, 
Of course, when we draw this line, you know, we are drawing accurately. But this uh, argument that we are making is just to get an idea of what uh, these lines will look like. Uh, this constant uh, h star equal to constant, what does it look like on a, uh, on a psychrometric chart. So, you can see that this line, these are the constant lines, okay. So, this is the h star axis. So, these are h star equal to constant lines, they go all the way. So, you can see that it is a straight line more or less with a negative slope, which is why we have shown uh, the chart in the second quadrant. So, h star equal to constant line looks like this. So, it is a uh, these lines are, um, uh, it has a negative slope. So, when the lines are drawn here, of course, you know, uh, we would not have neglected HG. HG would still have been taken into account, but for a uh, qualitative idea of what these lines look like, we can see that uh, or we can argue that HG is more or less a constant. So, H star equal to constant is going to appear more or less like a straight line in uh, with a negative slope in the psychrometric chart. Let us now move on to uh, the next quantity uh, Va. So, let us uh, indicate this in red. Now, Va on the face of it appears to depend both on T and omega, but if you look at the second term here 0.622 plus omega, if you look at omega, remember omega in this expression has units of kg vapor per kg dry air. So, in those units, Omega is typically a number of the order of about you know 0.001 to maybe 0.01, 0.02, not very big, okay, when compared to 0.622, which means that essentially this term uh, will not change much across the entire range of values that we are likely to encounter in uh, in psycho typical psychrometric application. So, which means VA probably depends very weakly on omega. If Va does not depend on omega at all, then it will be a straight line just like Pv and Tdp, a vertical line. If the dependence is weak, then it is going to be nearly a vertical line, not quite vertical, but nearly a vertical line and that is what we are likely to see. And the chart also shows that to be the case. Notice that, so these are V equal to constant lines and you can see that they are uh, very close to being vertical because the dependence on omega is very weak. So, the next uh, uh, expression that we are going to look at um, is the expression for uh, wet bulb. Okay? Now, if you look at this expression, again uh, this quantity uh, omega minus omega uh, wet bulb is likely to be a very, very small number. Okay? It is going to be a very small number. So, the second term probably is negligibly small which means that lines of constant wet bulb temperature will coincide with the lines of uh, constant H star. So, as you can see here, lines of constant T wet bulb coincide with H star of T. Okay? So, this is the, so this curved axis that you are seeing here uh, is the axis corresponding to wet bulb temperature. And you can see lines of constant uh, wet bulb temperature here. So, for example, uh, 20 degrees Celsius, 15 degrees Celsius, 10 degrees Celsius. So, you can see that they are almost uh, parallel to lines of constant H star. H star of T wet bulb uh, and H star of T are almost parallel to each other. So, they almost coincide with each other. So, which is why uh, we are seeing the uh, uh, wet bulb temperature constant axis being very, very uh, close to or the line of uh, wet bulb temperature constant coincides almost with uh, constant lines of H star. Okay? So, in summary what we can say from here is that if this is indeed a small number, then H star of T wet bulb uh, coincides with H star of T, which means lines of constant T wet bulb which would correspond to H star of T wet bulb being constant. So, lines of constant T wet bulb coincide with or are almost parallel to lines of constant H star and that is what we are seeing in the chart also. So, basically these are the quantities uh, contours of which 
or depicted in the psychrometric chart. So, let us summarize what we have said so far. So, we have argued that uh, lines of constant h star are straight lines, almost straight lines with a negative slope in the second quadrant in T omega coordinate space. And we also argued that 0 0.622 plus omega uh, depends very weakly on omega because omega itself is very small in psychrometric application. So, P v depends almost linearly on omega alone. The specific volume of dry air we argued uh, depends weakly on omega and depends linearly on T. In other words, V a equal to constant lines are nearly vertical because uh, it depends very weakly on uh, uh, omega and linearly on T. Okay, so, that is what we argued here. The quantity by omega minus omega wet bulb is usually very small which means that lines of constant wet bulb temperature almost coincide with lines of constant mixture specific enthalpy in the psychrometric chart. So, how does uh, the uh, psychrometric chart uh, make things easy, uh, make the calculations easy for us. Okay? Remember, we said that there was nothing wrong with the analysis that we have done so far, everything is fine. But the psychrometric chart uh, makes the um, uh, calculation process much simpler and uh, much more uh, quick in the uh, in actual uh, uh, in the case of um, uh, real life calculations and let us see how that is made possible. Okay?